Today we're going to walk through the new model driven app design experience from soup to nuts. So here I am in a trial environment at make.powerapps.com. I've already created a solution file which already has some assets in here. You can see there's a variety of tables and additional components. What we want to do now is add a new model driven app. So I'm going to click new, then app, and model driven app. Now this is where you start to see things a little bit different than before if you're still using the classic designer. So by default it's asking me if I want to use the classic app designer. We're going to change that and select model modern app designer which you can see is in preview mode. Now obviously in preview mode it's not fully functional. There are some limitations which we've talked about. But let's go ahead and create this and I'll show you what you can do today in the new design experience. The first thing we need to do is, of course, give our model driven app a name. So we'll call this Summit App and a description. This is your new BFF. And then create. Once I click the create button, that's going to give me my new blank canvas. So once this loads, we're going to be able to define everything we want to include in our app. Now this is where things are a little bit different than the classic solution designer. Every time Microsoft makes a change, it seems like they add new vocabulary for us and this doesn't disappoint in that. So we've got some new icons and some new language to kind of navigate through the building of our app. So everything here is controlled by a page. It brings me right to the page here. I can expand this so you can see there's pages, navigation, and data. So if I click Add Page, this is what a page is. It's either a table-based view and form, a dashboard, or custom, which is in preview mode, and that's a Canvas app. We are not going to dive into custom because we are focusing just on out-of-the-box configuration tools and specifically how they build a model-driven app. Um, there are other great training sessions that cover using custom pages, and they're awesome. And if I can find some resources, I'll link to them in the video. So we're going to start with a table-based view and form, and we'll also add some dashboards as well. We're going to go through the wizard, so we're going to click Next. And now we get to select one or more tables, and I really like there's a search in here, so you can start to write things in. It's just a, a little time saver. It's, it's user-friendly. I'm a big fan. So we've added contact. Let's add account, and we'll throw activities in here. So you can see as I type, if I type it correctly, um, it starts to filter what meets those criteria. So just little changes in here that make it a lot more user friendly. So when I hit OK, it adds those three tables that I've added underneath a group, which is group one here. And if I expand the carrot next to each of these, like I just did with account, you can click on account form. And then the panel on the right hand side will open up and I can select a specific form or multiple specific forms to be included in this model driven app. By default, no forms have been selected. You'll find this ca the case anytime you add a new table. Um, if you want it to be limited to a specific form or a few specific forms for your user group, you're going to click manage forms here and then select the ones that are appropriate for you. So if I select account and then click save, that's the only form that's going to show up. One of the things I really like is the immediate preview here in the center of the canvas, because there are times when I don't remember which form I want. So I can in real time just click these and play around and see what it is and make sure that I have the right one here. So I like that, fun little tip. Then we have account view. So if I go to account view, again, no views have been selected by default, all are on there. But if you're building a model-driven app, you're going to hide the noise, you're going to streamline the user experience, and you are going to select specific views here to make their lives easier. So you can scroll through and check however many boxes you want to check, click save when you're done, and then repeat for all of your tables. So all of your forms, all of your views, anything you want to streamline, you're going to do that there. So let's go back to add page, and I want to show you how to add dashboards. So this time we're going to select the second option here, which is Dashboard. Click Next, and now all of my system dashboards will show up in a list here. You can select whichever dashboard or dashboards you want for this user group. Click Add when you're done, and there's your dashboards. So again, you can expand this, and you can see the different dashboards here. Um, all of these with the, the little dots here, you can edit. 
So then you'd be able to come in and actually edit that dashboard directly, which then would also be in your solution file. Or if you accidentally removed it, you can just remove it. And that's not deleting it from everything. It's only removing it from your app sitemap. Um, additional functionality you can do, you can click on the two dots here where account is. And again, just edit your command bar or remove account. Now, navigation is where you control um, what shows up where. Um, I don't love this way of using navigation. I prefer the classic design experience for that, where you can simply click and drag and drop things on Canvas where you want. For these, you'll have to click those three ellipses next to your table name and use these move up, move down. Uh, it feels like a step backwards from what we had, but I'm hopeful they're going to improve this in future iterations of the new model-driven app designer. Finally, we have data. Now, data is simply just displaying the data that you have in your app or in your environment. So nothing super exciting in data other than it gives you a real view on things like your views. So you can see your data live in the app as your end users will see it. Additionally, you have your settings here. If you have written one name and you changed your mind or you want additional description, other settings such as changing the icon, adding anything in there that you want to add that's outside of this, you're going to have to toggle over to classic. And finally, you have save, publish, and play just like you do in the classic designer. So once you've done this, saved your app, you're ready to rock and roll. Any future changes you need to make after you've already saved this and published it and closed out of it will be done in your classic classic design experience. But when you're building it from new, you can take advantage of some of these great features and this beautiful canvas.